What is up? It's Jared Welch. He's Aaron Hall. Oh, man, I messed that up. <laughs> What's up, man? Well, that was great. You, you're, you're off to a, a fine start today. What is up? I'm Jared Welch. He's Aaron Altman. And this... Splinker's off. There you go. Is that better? That's better. Yeah, that is better. I'm so off. A little rough, though. I feel like you're you're struggling today. I'm off my game. It's been a you know, it's been a week. You know, I've been I've been having soccer practices, soccer <laughs> games, school. It's uh, you know, the the week after Saratoga. So I'm kind of in that uh, kind of recovery mode right now. So yeah, struggling a little bit. But yeah, I'm back. Yeah, that that soccer thing. That's uh, that's your own fault. There, you should have known better. <laughs> well, it it's really my. If we're going to put blame on somebody, it's my kid's fault, but, you know, whatever. Well, you can't blame the kids. <laughs> yeah, I can. <laughs> He's your kid, first of all. So <laughs> We'll see. I have, I have high hopes for tonight. We had practice, and he kind of, Cohen kind of came out of the shell. He scored a goal. He felt good. I'm hoping that tonight's game, we can, we can you know, that, why do you practice, Halterman? You practice so you can perform better in the games, and that's what right. we're looking for. So we're looking for tonight. So we'll see. It's a big game for the Bowsers. Well, the Bowser. <laughs> I didn't know that was their team name. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. We got uh, the Bowsers and Team Baymax. I don't expect you to know that Team Baymax, but Team um, what? Baymax. Big Max. Baymax. Ba- I don't know. I don't know what that is. Big Hero Six. It's you never you probably saw that movie. So yeah, maybe somebody listening on this will know, but. Uh, but, you know, the kids, we love it, but I, uh, everyone on the team loves the name. But it's uh, it's like an older, I don't know when it came out, maybe five, six years ago. Hmm. It's good, though. Never it's heard really of it. Good. So the Big Macs and the Bowsers. I love the Bowsers. That's great. That's fantastic. Still not the Big Macs, but it is the Bay Max. And, <laughs> you know, I let the boys pick their own names. And I said, what do you guys want to be? Well, you, you get the name. You know, that's the perks of, the, of your dad being the coach. And so you got the Bowsers. And Cooper won a Baymax, so uh, there you go. Look at that. She knows it. That's right. There you go. He, uh, yeah, he. So yeah, we love, we love Baymax. We love, but yeah, uh, we haven't lost yet this year in either in either league. Just saying. I mean, it's got to be due to the coaching, I think. So um, we're. I thought you looking. lost the first game. I thought you told me you lost. No, you had to loan the other team players the first. Game. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. I count that as a win. We right. We, That's we, a four. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, to be fair, on um, Team Bowser, we've had uh, we've had one win, which we had to loan players. Uh, one game got canceled out, and we have tonight. So technically, we haven't really played a full game yet. Um, but still, we haven't lost either. That's the way I look at it. Well, very good. I'm very proud of you and the Bowsers and the Big Macs. All, all very, very proud. <clears throat> the Big Macs is it's a good name too. Um, <laughs> all right, so. What's up, man? How's uh how's the flight line? How are you, are you still uh you know any 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 lasting thoughts that have you know since we 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 recorded this uh what was that Sunday mm-hmm. we talked about it you know anything that uh, you know obviously we saw that the thoroughgraph came out for him a minus eight and a half which is just just wild just wild how high that or how low everyone look at that number is uh, the highest ever so uh, any thoughts on uh, on the flight line? Final well, I, think, I think we covered it on Sunday. I, I think we're into the period of time where, you know, anybody over the age of, uh, let's say, 45 or 50, not not out all of them, but a lot of them are very, very triggered that this horse is being compared to a horse that they might have liked back in the 70s. Uh, but other than that, I, I, I think it's I think, uh, yeah, I don't I don't think anything differently. Um, I, I think the, he didn't beat anybody crowd is out and that is just wildly hysterical to hear that. Um, but no, other than that, uh, for my personal thoughts, I don't, I don't have any more than what we did on Sunday there. Yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing how many people, it never fails. Anytime a horse runs well, you know, we, epicenter travers, uh, as soon as, as soon as they're you know, it's like, oh, well, what did he really beat? You know? Country grammar, uh, you know, he doesn't he doesn't like the track that that did. You know, he he, he that you know the flight line just he didn't beat anything. Like it's great, you know, but twenty links, it's like whatever. It's like okay. I I just keep saying he beat the Dubai World Cup winner, and it's not like the Dubai World Cup winner didn't run very well. 
he got second in the race and he beat the third place horse easily. So yeah, it's just, it's crazy to, to think he beat nothing. I mean, really like he beat life was good. Uh, 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 country grammar beat life was good in the Dubai world cup, you know? So it's like, I think he beat a pretty good horse. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, I don't know what, what buyer did country grammar get, do you know? I really don't know. I, I, I'm not quite sure. Um, I, I would imagine the people that are saying he didn't beat anything probably before the race would have said country grammar is a good horse and he can beat him. You know what I mean? That's the thing. So yeah, it is what it is. Let people talk. Um, yeah. It's uh, tough news out of uh, yeah. the queen. So the queen has passed away. What she, I think she was 96, 90, yeah. 70 years. I think I've read that she had, she had had the throne there. So um yeah and she was a bit she was big in horse racing and and obviously uh you know royal ascot over there she you know attended that that was always a huge deal um but yeah uh that's uh i don't know how that works like what's i know that it's very there's a lot of you know things that have to happen now like in terms of you know what happened who's next and how that works i i'll sound stupid if i try to guess so i really don't know how that works now someone can enlighten me but uh yeah, that's uh, anytime you've had a, someone rule or, or reign for 70 years, uh, that's pretty wild. So, uh, yeah. Davey, yeah, he beat multiple Grey One winners and ran a sub two minute time, barely ask. Uh, but he didn't beat anything, Davey. That's, that's <laughs> right. That's the problem. I was like, whenever people told me that, I was like, who did you want him to beat? <laughs> you know, and, and, and what, what difference would it have made to you, you know, if, uh, Olympiad was in the race and he finished 15 links back. Yeah. Would we have said, would that, you know, those same people probably would have been like, well, you know, Olympia didn't really like, he didn't like shipping out there. That was not, was not great. Right. So, well, it's, it's like you said with Epicenter, I, I heard that all week. I heard how good the Travers was. And then the next week when he won, it's like, oh, he beat absolutely nothing in that race. It's like, well, what name a horse that you want him to line up against? It's in his division. There isn't anything like he beat the Haskell winner, you know, <laughs> and the Haskell winner got second. So it's almost the same kind of scenario. I, I don't know. I, people are never, ever going to be happy because it's not 1970 anymore. And, and their favorite horses have retired long ago and they don't they don't you know, they just can't be happy. And that's that's the vast majority, I think, of what we're seeing now. And listen, you may think, well, that what a mean thing to say. Well, it happens every week. And you kind of get sick of it after a while, you know. It, it, that's just how I feel like how it is. And like I said, not not everyone, but uh, I think that's all that's really talking now. Yeah. Uh, flight line closed in the, the second future wager uh, Monday at four to five. Epicenter seven to one. Life is good eight to one. Olympiad eight to one. And then at the next horse is Taba at 33 to one. So Olympiad, life is good, epicenter. Flight line. Those are your four main contenders as we uh, are, you know, two months out ish, a little less than two months out of the Breeders' Cup Classic. But four to five, four to five on flight <clears throat> on flight line, as much as I think, you know, I think he's is if he's in the race, he's locked, but that's just it, right? Like if you're taking, I just think it's absolutely nuts to bet this horse at four to five, two months away when the horse is obviously proven to have you know, injury concerns or can he stay, you know, it's like, I would much rather just bet him the day of at one to two or something like that, knowing that he's in the race versus at four to five, two months out. And you don't know if you have him at four to five and he's on the race. Well, you know, what did that do for you? I would, I would much rather look at that and be like, I'm going to play life is good at eight to one. Because uh, if, yeah, if, and if I think, lines and, on in the race, it, it it goes astronomical. Yeah, exactly. We covered that a lot. And Lori C asked question anyone here. I came out of the race, but uh, you know they always say they came out fine. But the big question mark, obviously, is how can you uh, bet uh, on him to even make a race, let alone run it? You know, win it uh, because he has missed scheduled starts before. They've had trouble keeping on the track. Look. This horse is amazing. Whether you think he's one of the greats or not, I don't care. You, you do know you can watch the race and say he's an amazing animal. He started five times. That tells you right there, like, uh, if he was sound, we would have a lot more starts. So, yeah, as far as Breeders' Cup future wagering, I wouldn't wager on him. If you're going to 
play against him, that was probably a good pool to do it. Uh, but at the same time, if he shows up, you're, you're probably in some trouble. But, you know, at least uh, if he doesn't show up, you've got better odds on those horses that you like right now. Of course, again, it's horse racing. And even the horses like Epicenter Life is good. You worry, who knows if they'll even be there. An injury can happen at any second in this game. So you're always taking your chances with those those pools. And um, we'll, we'll see. Hopefully he's there. It, that would be great to see him at Keeneland. But uh, you just never know until, until they enter. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, like like that. That to me, with Davey make getting eleven to one on life is good. Like that's great because that's to me. That's why if you're gonna play, which I'm not a big player. That's but if you are gonna play the pools, that makes sense because you're gonna you're trying to create value, um, and you understand that it is like. I just don't get why you're gonna take a horse that I would never take a horse sub even money. No. And a future wager that just seems wild to me. Davies Davies eleven to one on life is good. If Flightline is not in the Breeders' right. Cup Classic, life is good is going to be three to one probably. So Davies right. has created big time value with that bet. Yeah. Um, now does that mean that bet's going to win? <laughs> no, no, but he did yeah. create value. Yeah, and that's just it. If if Flightline does come come and and you have that eleven to one, you're thinking, well, I'm not going to cash this, but it's 11 to one and I'm, you know, what, I don't know what you put on it, Davey, but I would much rather put 11 to, you know, bet him at 11 to one three months out versus betting him at three to one against flight line or 10 to one, eight to one, whatever he's going to be. Yeah. Second choice. I just, at least you at least you're creating some sort of value if for whatever reason mm-hmm. um, he were to win. Um, I saw this comment. I don't think, I don't think I, I keep hearing this, talk about bad and coming to it's like face flight line. Like, I don't, I don't think even before this, they were even considering the breeders cup. Um, right. They were going to skip the, the breeders cup. I thought, well, just to explain, I think Rodney's kind of new to the game. Uh, he is a turf horse. And uh, so here's the deal. No, he's not afraid. Their turf horses are much, much better than ours uh, uh, normally. Right. So, uh, for for horses to come over from from Europe to the Breeders Cup, yeah, it happens some, but there isn't that isn't a proving ground for European horses, right? Like they don't come over here and go now we'll prove we're the best in the world. If they're winning their races, they believe that they are the best. Uh, in most cases, they usually are. Take a horse if you want to research one like Frankel, right? Dominant won all the big races over there. There was really no need for him to come over here and be, you know tourist you know he was a i don't know if the tourist lines up with frankel exactly but i just remember tourists winning one of the breeders cup miles like they don't have to come over here and prove it and that's the thing uh, if they had a great horse on the dirt which they have hardly any if, if any dirt race i don't think they do then maybe yeah you're going to come over here and try to beat ours because we have the best dirt horses so mm-hmm. that's kind of why there's no uh urgency for them to come over uh here with that horse I know that I know whenever he won that last race, um, the uh, what was it, the Judmont International? He was when when I talked to like John about it, you know, because like in the Breeders' Cup, it, it sounded like they are just going to run him one more time, and it's not even going to be the Ark, it's not going to be the Breeders' Cup, it's going to be you know something overseas, and then go off and make little bads, <laughs> bad. So I don't. <laughs> I think they know they don't seem interested in coming over here. Certainly not to come over and, and run against uh, uh, a, a horse like flight line on the dirt. Um, no, no, don't think that's, that's going to happen whatsoever. Yeah, no, no. but you know, it, to, to his point, we have seen that in the past where you have an international turf horse, try the classic, right? You know, we, we, we it's not like that's not happened before, yeah. um, but not a horse like that who no. is going to, if they were going to come, and I don't think it's happening. Um, certainly would be on in the turf. Yeah, um, it'd be a dom- turf race. Yeah. To dominate that. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. You got 12 to 1 on like on life is good, so I'm excited. I mean, I get that again, that's the same thing. Um, looks like Country Grammar got a hundred uh in the, that buyer for that, which is a little lower than I thought it would be, honestly. Um, I think it, it's always impossible for me to try to it's like how to how do you get a buyer? How do you assign a buyer for a horse that just got beat by 20 links? seems almost impossible to do but yes it does um and also pretty dumb but <laughs> you know <laughs> uh all right we've talked a lot about flight line we'll get into it but this week 
we've kind of taken a break from the uh, the Breeders Cup uh, classic anyways and we're going to look at the Breeders Cup challenge races for the turf that's right this week on Blinkers Off, we are going to give picks for Saturday's two Breeders' Cup Challenge Series races at Kentucky Downs. The one, we have a couple million-dollar races, too. A million-dollar Kentucky Turf Cup and the $1 million FanDuel Turf Sprint. So, yeah, Kentucky Downs. How about that? Getting Breeders' Cup Challenge races. So, we have to talk about that. And we're going to give some rapid-fire selections for some of the remaining major stakes races this weekend at Del Mar and, of course, Kentucky Downs. Let's go! Yeah, this is this is the first this is the first time they've had um Breeders Cup races at Kentucky Downs, right? Second or third time. I know they had it last year for sure. Definitely didn't have one for the turf though, did they? I mean like for the Longines turf. I'd have to look back. I know last year they had two Breeders Cup winning in races. I'm not sure what they were. Um and honestly, we were talking off air with these Breeders Cup winning in races, it's kind of just Anybody's guess what they are every year. It's weirdness a lot of times. But I know they made a big deal out of it last year, I think, was the first year. Yeah. I, I just didn't – for some reason, I couldn't – See, it feels like that having a win in your end for the turf, like the Longines turf at Kentucky Downs, is something I – I mean, that seems like a stretch. It seems like it was the sprint uh, had a win in your end. Yeah, I, but i be real honest. I don't remember. Thoughts on Gold, the Gulfport race, Halterman? I mean, he blew the turn, and that was that. I mean, he didn't run very well. Um, two two races now. He went there and lost, so... Two races now, he's, 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 he, sh he looked like he should win, and he didn't, and he's gotten himself in trouble, or... He's been in trouble, and yeah, he completely blew the turn. Yeah, um, I think he's a little overrated as well. Um, I think we wanted to make him better. Um, he certainly could turn out to be good, um, but yeah, that just he just seems like you're on the you're now on the pause and wait kind of game with him. So yeah, I listen. The first time it's like yeah, he got in trouble. This time it's like <laughs> I mean you. You turn. You're a very experienced horse at this point too, and you turn for home. You just blow it, blow the turn. Yeah, uh, you know that's you not good. A, I mean, you had no excuse. You had a good jockey aboard. No, yeah, you know, no, no concerns there. But yeah, we'll we'll talk a little bit about two year old racing coming up here in Rapid Fire. It's uh, you know, we got uh, out to Del Mar this week with uh, the debutante, and uh, we haven't, we don't have it out yet. But the Del Mar for charity, of course. Um, you know, the Bob Baffert classics one and two, right? So we'll talk about uh, some of those two-year-olds that we're going to be seeing this weekend. Seems like uh, every year the two-year-olds are more exciting out, out west. Um, and uh, we'll see if that lines up this year as well. But let's first go to Kentucky Downs. <clears throat> let's see. Saturday, Kentucky Downs. We've got two Breeders' Cup Challenge races to talk about here. Race 9 will kick things off. The FanDuel Turf Sprint Stakes Grade 2 worth a million dollars for three-year-olds and up going six furlongs on the turf. And it is a Breeders' Cup winning your end for the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. So, dude, I mean, you don't find many, if at all, winning your end turf sprints for a million dollars. So, of course, you've got a large field of 12 lines up. Uh, to compete here, and it's headlined by the outside horse, number 12, a recipe red, your nine to five morning line favorite. Are you going to try to beat him here? Um, or what do you think of this race? No, I'm going to kick it off playing a recipe uh, red. I, I just kind of feel like this horse has been really good to us, and so I'm going to keep try to keep it going with this horse here today. Uh, look, I I don't think this field is great. I think if a recipe red handles it, he's going to win this or handles the conditions I should say of Kentucky downs. He's going to win. I think he's definitely the most likely winner. I'm going some other prices on this card for sure, but I do think this is a situation where the favorite's going to be awfully tough to beat. I, I thought about the number two chewing gum for a while as well. Coming second off the layoff here. Um, you know, my sus suspicion is he might like Kentucky downs. A little bit, uh, but in the end, I, I just thought a recipe red looked too tough. 
Yeah, I looked at him quite a bit too. Um, I, I looked at uh, at him. I looked a lot at Gregorian Chant. I looked at front run the Fed. Um, I just, you know, couldn't. I just kept going back to a recipe red, just thinking. I mean, this horse looks like a standout on paper. Yes, the horse got beat last time out, um, but that horse obviously, you know being <laughs> Casa Creed is, is not a bad horse. And this race here just doesn't scream uh, uh, upset in my opinion. I, and I'm with you. And that's the thing about the, this, this, uh, this day. I mean, you're listening, you can listen to magic Mike after us. Uh, they're talking Kentucky downs, late pick four. It's, it's, it's tough because it, it just feels like any, any race you pick at Kentucky downs and you know it better than anybody you, you pick a horse, you think, well, that horse should win, but it's Kentucky Downs, and crazy shit happens at Kentucky Downs every single day uh, they run. So it's, you got to, how do you, ha- how do you handle these sequences? Uh, you know, for you, do you, do you take, do you take any singles or do you try to, even if you like a horse like a wrestling red, do you also throw in, you know, you talked about chewing gum or whoever it is, or do you just take, take stands and then go deep in other legs? You have to hook on to one horse and then go as deep as you can in every other leg. That's that's how I've had success at Kentucky Down. Limited success, I should put it. The multis are extremely hard to hit. Now, this is a track to me. There's 12 races. I don't play any of the multis. I'm just trying to hit one, two, three of the other ones with straight bets, whether it be exact as tries, whatever. And the payouts are are, are large enough to cover some of the other track or some of the other races, but. Yeah, as far as multis go, this will probably be the horse I try to hook into. And I'm not kidding, five, six deep in the other races. And, and you know, playing ones that it's like, yeah, he doesn't make sense, but maybe a little bit of sense, throw him on there, right? Those are the horses that win a lot of times in these races. So you got to find that one. You kind of said it, Casa Creed, really, really nice horse. Came back to win the four-star Dave. So losing to him and the Jap and the Jowper by a half length, not that big of a deal for Respy Red. So uh, I think he's the one to kind of hook onto in this late sequence. Yeah, not forget. Let's not forget Casa Creed came back to win a Grade One after that race too. Yeah. Um. So it's not like Casa Creed just kind of got the best of him that day and got lucky. I mean, that horse obviously is running at a very high um, level, and that race itself, the Jiper was a very productive race in itself, and. You know, that horse had been coming off, you know, had been running a little bit. Um, Rest me red has, has had a little bit of break since June. So I think this horse will be fresher, will be tougher. Um, loves this distance for four, four starts of this distance, three wins in a second. Hasn't, you know, hasn't tried Kentucky Downs, but if I, if, if you got Wesley Ward chipping in and Irad, you know, keeps them out, I mean, they're, they're not shipping in to lose. So um, I, I like Rest me red here as well. And to me, We'll talk about these next couple uh, races here uh, here in a second. This is this is the one that I felt sort of the best about. <laughs> like I'll put that very very loosely. Uh, that this was the favor that I was like, all right, I'm gonna roll with this favorite, and I'm gonna try to beat some others. Well, like you said, the Jiper definitely a key race without any doubt. Castle Creek comes back to win the four star Dave. True Valour, the third place horse, nearly beat Golden Pal up at Saratoga in a race. Change of control came back to win. Uh, what makes Sammy run ran well, uh, hasn't won, but has ran well. Gray's Creek has won. The Grand Chant was second in a, in a solid race. Uh, you know, you keep on going down. Even the, the the second to last place finisher came back to win three in a row. Chasing Artie came back to win the last place finisher. So, yeah, it seems like that was a, to- a totally loaded race. And so arrest me red right here in a race that I don't think looks very strong on paper. Yeah, I think I read five, or at least when I looked at earlier, five horses out of that race came back mm-hmm. to win. Um, so obviously it was a very, uh, very productive race. And, yeah, I mean, it is it is a tough race, Dennis. Um because you kind of have the fear that a recipe red could run really well and, and, you know, gets hung out wide or something. And Kentucky downs is weird. It's just, it's just, it's tough. Like this horse could run well and, and finish second. But when I look at the next one, which we'll talk about here in a second, you know, with you're trying to beat Gaffo, uh, And that to me is a horse that a lot of people will be singling. 
I'm going to try to do the opposite and try to beat that horse and, and get this horse home uh, here. Yeah. Well, I, I think if this race was run under normal turf conditions, I don't think you would think it's quite as tough. No, but of course not. Knowing this place, it's tough because <laughs> who knows what this horse will do, how this horse will like Kentucky Downs. You never know until they run over it. Yeah, you're right. And uh, I mean, is this how do you make this any sort of I mean, my fear is with these Kentucky Downs races, you just don't do and we talked about this i do remember talking about this a little bit last year with that the, the winning you're in where it's like what are you supposed to do with these as they as they go towards the breeders cup because this feels like you they if they win this race you're like great but we know kentucky downs is an odd track breast red might be the exception because obviously he's shown ability everywhere um but if say an upset horse wins this race or the next one or whatever it's like it's hard to put a lot of stock into what you see at Kentucky Downs in terms of moving forward. It truly is a track. It just depends on the winner. Like if a Raspberry Red shows up, he likes it, he wins. Well, he's been running well all year and in big spots. So sure, you you, you take him going forward. You know, if Necker Island wins, who's trying the turf for the first <laughs> time in a while, and it's not a knock on Necker Island, but he doesn't seem to be a Breeders' Cup sprint type. If he was to win this race and earn his shot, I, I don't know that he's going to be able to repeat it. So it really just depends on, on who we see win the race. All right. Well, I mean, this is, uh, like I said, this is a win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. And uh, Halter and I are both going with the outside horse, the favorite, the Wesley Ward trainer, trainee, 9 to 5, number 12, Arrest Me Red. All right, let's go to the next one here. Race 10, the Kentucky Turf Cup Stakes Grade 2. Another million-dollar race for three-year-olds and up, going one, one and a half miles on the turf. Another Breeders' Cup Challenge race. Breeders' Cup winning your in for the Longines Turf. Uh, and this, uh, you know, a field, another field of 12. No no shock there. And 7-5 to five with Gaffo. And I, I told you, I told anybody that was with us that day after he upset us, uh, you know, on our ticket, we had him, but of course we wanted mere mission after he won. It's like, wherever he shows up next, you're not, you cannot pick a foe. Cause this is what he does. He'll win a big race and he'll let you down. I didn't know he would show up at Kentucky downs in a race that certainly looks like he should be able to win. So what do you do with Gafo? It, it's very interesting that he's here. Like you said, coming off just two weeks rest, he did run fantastic. Uh, in the sword dancer, but like you said, we've seen this before from him. Oh uh, gosh, he's he's real hard to play at seven to five. He seems like the horse. I mean, he seems like he should win, but he really, on paper, looks like he should win every time he's entered. Right? And he just right. doesn't. You know, I can't believe I'm doing it. I'm gonna go with Arclo on top. I I oh. just could <laughs> not go. Dude, but the thing is with Arclo, he loves this track. We know that, right? He runs well over this track. You're right. He's eight years old. He came off a long ass layoff and he ran pretty well in the bowling green. You got to think, second off the layoff, he's going to improve. I just feel like he's going to, this is a good spot for him to win. I, I, I hate picking him, but. He, I thought about Temple, but it's like, yeah, he didn't run very. He hasn't ran very well at Kentucky Downs. So I, I have to take Arclo in this spot. Uh, you look at some of these other ones, man, they don't look very good. Um, I'm sure one of these weird ones is going to jump up and win, but I, I'm taking Arclo. I don't, you know, he. <laughs> I don't. I know why you picked him, and I, I can't blame any you know, reasoning. And he, of course, loves Kentucky Downs. You know, that's very – it's a very rare thing. You can see a horse that started, you know, that's running at Kentucky Downs that you might see one that's like has ran there once or twice, but Arklow's ran there at uh, Kentucky Downs four times mm -hmm. and has two wins and two seconds. So you talk about a horse for course, and he certainly does. Uh, the $3 million horse, his horse is just, God, he's ran every race, it feels like. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you're right. After that long layoff, he, he ran a really good second at Saratoga. So you would think, um, this is his kind of race uh, to win. I just, it's like, I couldn't, it's our I couldn't do it. No, I, don't, I couldn't I'll do it. it. <laughs> but, but 
I was totally, and I'm with you. It's like, uh, I think, I don't know. So, yeah, I think someone said it here. If it was the quick turnaround for Gafo is very telling. Like, obviously, Gafo is doing very well um, to be entered here. It's a million dollar purse. I'm not, so I wouldn't be surprised if he runs really well. He runs okay pretty much every time, you know. He just sometimes decides he wants to win. Uh, dude. I went all over the place in this one. I mean, I was, I, I tried every horse. I really did. I went through and I, I would have highest honors up and then I would have, you know, uh, uh, who's the star, you know, that's interesting horse kind of making this, you know, third turf start been look has looked good since switching over. Um, I, I have live in, you know, Glen County. Um, I looked at our of course temple. I was real close to pulling the trigger on, I'm working my way there. I went on I went to number one red night. I listen, I, I get it. It's an upset pick for sure. I'm going as deep as I can. Certainly don't think that this is like a likely, likely winner, but obviously he's 15 to 1 for a reason. So I'm gonna try to beat him or try to beat the favorite with a, a price. And if I'm if I'm using a horse to beat him, I might as well um you know try to go, you know, go deep here and and go kind of a crazy because listen red knight has ran at kentucky downs actually um in this race last year and who did he get beat by your horse mm -hmm. arclo but he ran well he ran his you know his old his first and he's ran two career triple digit buyers that would be good enough to win this race um and he got he ran a 101 that day uh, at uh two arclo and then he ran 100 after that you know and prior to that he ran like a 92 which he ran in 91 last time out um, I just think that he likes Kentucky Downs. He's now with Maker. He's so he's got them, he's got that Maker stuff going on here. Um, so he's got you think he would improve a little bit next time out. Uh, and you know, the horse, hey, did you see the horse that he beat <clears throat> last time? Uh, snap decision came back to win a steeplechase race. <laughs> so, <laughs> so obviously the class is there, right? <laughs> well. I love the trainer switch. You know, Maker does a great job with horses going long on the turf. So I do like the tra trainer switch last time out. He did run well. I, I don't absolutely hate it. Um, you can say, I, I get it. I mean, listen, I, it, you know, because Maker's got, what has he got? Uh, three in the race? Uh, yeah, he, he's got a bunch. But honestly, like Temple, I like Red Knight better than I like Four. Temple. Yeah, so, exactly um I, temple temple seems like the like on paper you just kind of say oh sure i mean he's six to one like that seems like a horse that could pull the upset and you literally look at him you're like yeah i don't know i'm looking for horses that have upside the horses that maybe are you yeah. know i think the nine who's a star dennis you mentioned that horse i think that horse is super interesting just because it's, he's a little unknown of what he is uh certainly on the turf and i'm I also just don't want to play Gafo, you know. I just, I, I just can't. Um, so yeah, I'll do it, man. I will pick Red Knight, and I, you know, I don't feel awesome about it. You mentioned Arklo, and he'd made four starts at Kentucky Downs. They've all come in this race. This will be the fifth straight year he's been in this race. Is it all this race? Every time it's been this race, yes. Uh, and I said fifth straight That's year. Amazing. I, I don't think he missed one in between. But yeah, this will be the fifth time he's been in this race. That's incredible. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. He started in the first time he ran here was 2018. So yeah. Yeah. Turf so Cup. And straight. then yep. Turf Cup 19, 20, Turf Cup 21. Yeah. And they're like, hey, let's do it again. Let's run them back. There Five. You go. I mean, this will be his fifth time. He, like I said, he's finished first or second in the last four of these. It's, I mean, that's truly amazing. Win or lose, that's unbelievable. He, he's eight years old. I mean, the dude's, like I said, he's ran. It seems like he's ran in every single possible race. Um, he's ran the Breeders' Cup. He's ran in the Pegasus. I mean, <clears throat> well, where has he not ran? So, it, it, Kentucky Downs obviously is his favorite track. I would say it's one of the most successful. Um, you know, tracks is for, in terms of, uh, you know, being able to rely on them. So yeah, I seven to two though. I, I, wouldn't you love to have them at like five to one or something? 
I'd love to have him at 50 to one, but that's wow. how he's going to be, you know? I Yeah, for sure. I, I, I hate that, that he's going to be seven to two. Thank God Gafo's here. He would be the favorite. So that would be even worse. <laughs> I know, right? Um, you know, look, I'll be real honest with you. I didn't know this horse was still in training. And Slim sent me a, like a video of him at like six in the morning one morning after he'd been on the backside. He's like, you're not going to believe this. Our clothes still here. And I looked, I was like, holy shit. He's like, he's going to run in the bowling green. Like, no, you've got to be kidding me, you know? But he ran really well that day. So, fuck, I mean, maybe, maybe he's still got it at the age of eight. He ran a 101 buyer. And I mean, that was off of a, what is that, like a 10 month layoff? Yeah. So, not bad. Uh, no. If you look at his numbers, I mean, really just ran right back to what he, what he's ran in the past. So, um, and yeah, he's made $3 million for a reason. So yeah, I think the idea here is no matter how you're playing this, this sequence, um, this seems like a race that I'm, I'm personally okay with getting beat by Gafo. I don't know if maybe you still use Gafo in your pick fours and pick fives just to have coverage and go, you know, go deep in all the legs. Um, and try, you know, but you've got to me. This is a race you've got to try to beat Gafo because if yeah. you if you were if you single, I I wouldn't single Gafo with Dennis's money or your money. <laughs> I would with Dennis's. Well, that's true. I might with Dennis, but not with yours. Um, I like you too much. But okay, all right. You and I are both playing against the favorite Gafo. You're going number four, the blast from the past, Arclo, and I'm gonna take a little shot here with the one Red Knight. We'll see. You got to play horses for courses here. So <laughs> <laughs> he oh. is the ultimate Kentucky Downs horse. There's no arguing that. He, they should have a statue out, outside of Kentucky Downs for him, I think. They really should. If he wins this race, I, I'm going to push for that. <clears throat> what race are we doing here? Ladies. Let's go here. Ladies. <laughs> <clears throat> is that out yet? Is that uh Delmar out yet? Uh let's see. Delmar no. Lovely. <clears throat> All right. Time for rapid fire presented by Bet PTC. Bet with the racing dudes at Bet PTC and get a two hundred dollar new member bonus. BetPTC.com. Use promo code dudes D U D E S and get your two hundred dollar new member bonus. That's BetPTC.com. We've got Kentucky more Kentucky Downs uh, to talk about here. So we'll go, we'll go to Del Mar after that. But let's go to Saturday. Stay at Saturday, I should say, and let's go back on the card a little bit with race eight. That's the Kentucky Downs Ladies Turf Stakes, grade three, 750K for Phillies and Mares. Three rolls and up going one mile on the turf. Field of 10 lines up for this one, Halter Man. You've got Princess Grace at three to one and Delica in the inside rail there at two to one. Hindy Woods at nine to two. Those seem to be your main, I guess, Stolen Holiday. I'll include uh, her as well at four to one. Your main threats there are you taking the favorite number one, Delica? I am not. I am definitely not going to take the favorite here. I'm going to go number four, Lady Spite Spear on top. The horse has won two in a row since uh, kind of dropping down in class. But remember, this horse is facing some really nice runners early in the year. Bleecker Street twice, uh, Regal Glory, Speak of the Devil when she actually ran a really good race. So uh, some crazy races. Then we went to Woodbine and the horse won two in a row. And I think you look at this field today, it's it's better than what she was facing at Woodbine, I think, but not by much. Uh, I also like to cut back to a mile here again. Um, I think that's going to be good for Lady Spite Spear. I love the 8-1 to price. Uh, that's the biggest thing. You look at this, and I don't think she looks much, much different than those favorites, uh, to be honest. So I am going to go number 8, Lady Spite Spear, on front, in front, I should say. Um, and, and hopefully we get every bit of that 8-1 to price. I don't hate that pick. That's uh, the eight to one. I, I certainly looked at that horse quite a bit because I just thought, man, that eight to one seems uh, way too good. I'm I'm two and taking. I played against number one Delica um, for similar reasons. I but I actually went with not much of an upset here. But number eight Princess Grace. Um, I don't know. I really I've always really liked this horse. Uh, you know, this is a horse that 
is coming in off of a second place, damn near one, the Beverly D, grade one, Beverly D two, of course, Delica. Um, that day going <clears throat> going a mile and an eighth. This horse now, you know, going the mile distance where you know she's got three wins and five starts. Oh, and by the way, she's one for one at Kentucky Downs. She won this race last year. Who did she beat? Delica. So she likes this track. She won this run the race prior to that late race at Churchill Downs. Um, she's a classy horse. She just kind of runs her race every time. She'll be forwardly placed. Doesn't have to be on the pace as well. Uh, I don't know. I just don't. I'm not interested in playing Delica at two to one. No. Uh, but you know, like D- people, Dennis thinks Delica is a gift at two to one. So I mean, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> should be about 15 to one, if not that atrocious turf course. That... I think he's saying a gift that she is. Uh, for, so the horses that actually can win. Oh, like to great. play against. Oh, yeah. That, that's oddly written. So, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. That is a gift. If you're trying to beat Delica, I agree. Um, you cannot play that horse yet. There's Jalen. Hey, yeah, what's yeah. up Jalen? Um, to complete toss. Cannot. Yeah. The green dirt. It's not even, it's not even green now. I think they just got rid of it. So, uh, and I don't know, Shoddy. What are we talking about? The Hamilton reference. I love Hamilton. So if I did, I may have done it uh, accidentally, but I don't I've know what you're about. Yeah. Hamilton? Come on. I've, ne- I've never seen it. Doesn't surprise me you don't know what that is. No. Know? <laughs> um, all right. You and I are both playing against the favorite number one, Delica. You are on the four, Lady Spike Spear. I am on the eight, Princess Grace. Let's go to race number 12. Uh, here we go. The Franklin Simpson stakes, grade two, uh, 600 K. This is for three year olds going six and a half furlongs on the turf field. 12 Halterman lines up here. And one of the, the shorter prices, uh, other than Gafo uh, in the sequence, number six, big invasion, your eight to five Morty line favorite and deservingly. So, I mean, this horse has been awesome, uh, really all year been really awesome at Saratoga. Seems tough. Uh, you know, I, I quickly kind of made the decision. I'm going to play this horse. This horse has won six in a row. Rosario gets back, gets the mount uh, back, of course, as the regular rider. So are you going to try to beat Big Invasion? I'm not trying to beat Big Invasion. I, I love this horse. I've been singling this horse like three straight times now. I, I just think he is the real deal. Now, Kentucky Downs may be the spot to get him beat, right? It could be like, oh no, he like he got second, but he did something screwy. But I think he could run on glass. <laughs> he looks really, really damn good. It's nice that you've seen him win on a few different turf courses. Obviously, this is completely different. <laughs> what that what does that mean moving forward? Well, it's hard to say, but he has shown he doesn't need his track to win. He won at Gulfstream, he won at Churchill. Uh, on the green dirt, and then he won at Belmont. Yeah. And he won at a horse that can win on that turf, and then go win at Belmont, <laughs> and then go win at Saratoga. He can, he literally can run on anything. Well, he's got a dirt win in his resume <laughs> as well. So. Pretty much. So he's yeah. looking to win on the on the long weird turf, and on the green dirt, and then on the regular <laughs> turf. So uh, no, I, listen, I think he's really really good. Uh, he's another one probably going to try to hook on to him. And, and hope he wins and go deep everywhere else. You know, the horse, I wouldn't say I was close to picking, but the horse that I <clears throat> I do have a lot of interest in is number seven, Run Curtis Run. I just thought he, but then you look at him, you're like, okay, well, you get anytime he ever faces Big Invasion, Big Invasion beats the shit out of him. But he runs well. Like, he's a he's a nice little horse. He, he run, you know, that quick call, he ran. He was the one right there with that pace at 21 and 43. And, you know, he kicked on. It's just, you know, Big Invasion was a monster. So I, 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 don't, I, I don't think Run Curtis Run is going to embarrass himself. I like, like, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't, uh, if you're looking to make money on the race individually, like a six, seven straight exacta, I think it makes a lot of sense here because I do, don't expect the seven to, to run poorly. You might get find some value there. Um, are you singling? Do you think, is it, is it, is it if you're playing the sequence, um, obviously we talked about, you know, with the nine, the ninth race, I should say, you know, singling a recipe red, are you singling big invasion or if they're, are you going to try to get them beat a little, or, you know, if, if, if you try to make a price here um, in the sequence. Well, the problem is he's beaten most of these before. So it's kind of hard to like where, okay. If I'm not going to single, where am I going to go? Um, 
I don't, I don't <clears> know. Like run Curtis run. He's beaten him twice. You know, asymmetric is a horse. I, I kind of like, but big invasion beat him twice. Uh, I'm not, I don't have the ticket hundred percent worked out yet. I think I'll go pretty short here and just try to go deep in that uh, 10th and the 11th and then go short in the ninth. I think that's, that's how I'll end up playing it. I may go one other horse in here. I just don't know who it would be. Maybe stitched, but the horse, you know, is coming off of a, a three wins in a row, but they've kind of come against weaker. But like I said, with the big invasion, it's like, yeah, I'm not going to play him. God, well, who the hell are you going to play? You know, like he's just, he's beaten too many of the main contenders already. Maybe it's Stitch, maybe Sumter, but at the end, I just think he kind of he kind of overmatches him a little bit. Our boy Jalen, he will not pick Big Invasion. He's no no interest there. So we'll see. I, my, my problem was with what you kind of you alluded to. It's like, well, if you don't, if you're not picking him, who like I mentioned, Run Curtis Run. Well, we we know he can't match up with the horse. You know, he's beaten Good. him um asymmetric i think is interesting couldn't hang right who is two his two races in the united states big invasion smoked him yeah. um so it's like it's tough to kind of get there how about the did you have any interest in uh i thought the well, horse that was interesting was the five all in sync for Askewson debuted or i mean i'm sorry finally switched to the turf um at ellis and really kind of looked like the light bulb went off ran a nice race Obviously, this is a tougher race, but could that horse make a step up? Maybe. I don't know that Aspuson and Brian Hernandez on the turf is a, a way to go to beat a horse like Big Invasion. But, yeah, I mean, he does have some interest. Um, you know, the two horse for Pletcher, Shan Show, kind of cutting back, that could help. I wouldn't take the seven, the eight, the nine, the ten. Like, if you're going to try to beat him, I would go somewhere like – what you said, the five, perhaps. I would try to get a double-digit price in somewhere. God, you just look at something. Call me midnight. I mean, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> I, I, you know, Tiano, Twist, Heaven Street. I mean, these horses are not very good in this race. Coinage, that's a horse cutting back that at one time looked pretty decent. I don't know. Maybe maybe find the juice again. I, I'm not sure. I just don't know where to <laughs> go. <clears throat> Any any horse you pick, they're either going to have to totally turn the tables on a horse that's already beat them, or they're going to have to take a big step up. I agree. All right. Uh, you and I are both on number six. Big invasion here seems uh, just too tough or too, too good to lose here. We need a translator. I know. I don't know what that means. I can't translate on here. I can translate. We can translate it later, but I can't do it now. Something um, good. Bueno is good. <laughs> very good. That's great. <laughs> <clears throat> what else? You can you help us? You uh, may know. Law is the. Yeah, yeah, that's all I got. Well, that's helpful. <laughs> good luck good the i guess that's what i read out good of the <laughs> <laughs> thank you whatever you said if it hopefully it was nice we appreciate it <laughs> i think seven box two four uh, i i no, i'm not gonna all right all right let's go to del mar uh on saturday race eight we'll uh kick things off at del mar the tvg Del Mar debutante stakes, grade one, 300K for Phillies, two-year-olds going seven furlongs, field of eight. Uh, lines up for this one. We've got, you know, we had the, the meet end at Saratoga uh, last week, and, of course, they had their two-year-old racing, and now it's Del Mar's turn to have their two-year-old racing with the Phillies on Saturday and then Sunday, which we don't have a card out yet. We wanted to talk about uh, the few charity. We'll, we'll mention that here in a little bit. I'm going to talk about initially who we're looking at. Um, but it's their turn. It's Del Mar's turn. So the field of eight lines up, and you're looking at nine to five on home cooking, and you're looking at three to one on Vegas Magic, three to one on the three horse, uh, and tell me Nolies. That's a great name. Um, but to me, I was between. I was trying to decide between home cooking for Bob Baffert or Vegas Magic for Doug O'Neill. 
I, I really believe home cooking is is a really nice one. I remember when the horse debuted, bet down to two to five, got beat by Justique, and everybody went crazy for that horse. And, uh, you know, and for good reason, it won really impressively. Uh, but I remember next out, and sometimes you, if you remember these Baffert horses, sometimes the ones that lose on debut and then come back and romp the next time, they're the ones that end up being some of his better ones. And you think about uh, American Pharaoh, who lost on debut and then came back to win. I'm not comparing this horse, but the pattern is similar. Came back next out and just did what we all thought she would do on debut and absolutely dominated. Comes up here to this spot. I think the longer, the better with this horse. I think the horse will improve going seven furlongs. Ton of respect for Vegas Magic, but uh, I think home cooking is the kind of the up and comer here. I think she's going to be tough in this spot. I expect an improved effort off of a really good, sharp effort last time out. Yeah, I uh, you know when I handy first initially looked at this, I didn't know who John would uh, who he would kind of land on for the favorite. I thought uh, the one was really nice in the Sorrento. It obviously has a little more class edge um, on the uh, on the six home cooking, but it it's hard to go against Bob Baffert and Mike Smith teaming up with a two year old, especially when the horse. I'm with you. I thought that horse looked really you know for the way the horse looked on debut. To the way he looked or she looked the next time out, I thought was very, very eye catching. You know, they didn't mess around, and this horse won by almost 10 links that day, um, going five and a half furlongs, uh, sired by Honor Code out of a hard spun mare. I mean, just just get this horse going long, right? You know, just, just keep yeah. stretching her out, it seems like, um, at least certainly longer than five and a half furlongs. So, going to seven, I'm not concerned with. I think she's going to be awful tough to beat. Do you think she's going to go? You know, which you, they went right to the lead. And a lot of times with these Bob Baffert two-year-olds, that's what we see. They go right to the lead. Um, but, you know, on the last time out, she kind of set off of it. Do you think we're going to see – which way are you going to see – you think we'll see her go? I kind of think they'll sit off of it if unless nobody goes. Because, to me, she looks to me like a type that does, that does her best running stocking. Like, I, I think, you know, that first race, the opening quarter cooked that horse. And so last time they relaxed her – and they gave her a target, and then that was it. So, uh, yeah, I I think you're gonna sit second or third, and then and then when she asks, you go. Um, sorry to do this to you, but Michael, it's it's ridiculous. I I when you ever, <laughs> when I saw you pick them, I I I couldn't believe it. You love the Cardinals. I don't though. That's the thing. I hate them. I used to love them. No, but listen, <laughs> I don't know. I can't explain it. They were ahead in that game, and it's 11-4. to four. They're getting smoked by the Nationals. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, all right. You and I are both on number six, home cooking. Think about Baffert. Well, let's be honest. Bob Baffert, we think, wins both these two-year-old races uh, this weekend in uh, this race and a few charity. But, yeah, home cooking for me as well. All right, let's go to the next one here, the race nine, the John C. Maybe stakes grade two. We're 250 K for Phillies and Mares, three olds and up going uh, one and one eighth miles on the turf. Field of seven lines up here. And I thought this was an interesting matchup between going to Vegas, kind of a, a kind of similar as the last race and then going global, um, not to be confused with one another, both Diamanto horses, four to five, five to two. I think you can make a case for both of them. So give me your thoughts. Yeah, I think you can too. Uh, look, the last time, uh, you know, going global and uh, and going to Vegas matched up, going uh, to Vegas was able to finish ahead of going global. But I just, the horse just did not run very well that day. Um, I think going global is the better horse overall. So I'm going to go with her. I think, I think you rely on her a little bit more. Um, I have not analyzed the whole sequence yet, so I'm not sure what I'll do multi-race, but on top, I am going to go with going global. Yeah, I, I tried to beat going global last time out and, uh, paid the price for that one because I, she just was too good. And, uh, you know, I feel like she's kind of, it seems like she's running on, uh, her kind of top level at the moment. And it seems like she coming into this race, you know, she's three for four at Del Mar, one second in that as well. The distance, she's got three wins and four starts. She, this is right up her alley. And, you know, I think with going to Vegas, you know, we haven't seen her since May. And while she did get the the, the best of her that day, I, she's also kind of, I, I just, I don't think going global, like you said, was just absolutely at her best. The freshness edge for me um, 
put put going global uh, uh, on top. But I did think it was interesting that it seems like Pratt could have rode either one, and uh, he's he's on the one going to Vegas. I but I also wondered if the fact that you know Rispoli did win with going global last time out, if he if if Diamano just said, you know what, we're going to keep it as is. You know, last time out going to Vegas had uh, had Irad, so now we need a new jockey. Now Pratt gets back, so maybe that's how it worked out. It wasn't necessarily um, Pratt picking one or for the other, but certainly made me think. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think maybe what it was was Pratt was on the loss two races back. Then, like I said, Rispoli got aboard, and it's like, yeah, why mess with it? You know, like we need to we need to keep Rispoli on. He's won the last two starts, so that he's been on her and. I think that may be more of what it is than anything else. And like you said, you had going to Vegas here and it's like, well, we need a writer. So our writer obviously is not here. So I right. think that's more of what it was. And, uh, you know, these horses are very evenly matched. So, uh, but it's been a while since going to Vegas has won a race. So we'll see if he can kind of, or she, I should say, can kind of, you know, knock that losing streak out. Going, going, uh, going global. That will be fun. Race yes. ball. <laughs> going for global. Uh, going global is a nine wins and fifteen starts. Has an almost eclipse that one million dollar mark. You'd expect to see that here for going global. So you and I are both are on the same page here. We're on number five. Going global. All right. We don't have it out yet, but we'll at least talk about it real quickly. The Sunday uh, run happy Del Mar for charity. Again, it's not out, but a horse uh, by Cave Rock. That's the horse that you and I are, think, I, I mean, at least I think I know I am, we're leaning towards, right? For Bob Baffert, who was really impressive last out. Yeah, if you missed it, go back and watch the debut for Cave Rock. This is a horse that was probably the most uh, impressive, uh, you know, a debut runner at Del Mar during the meet here. Really, really impressive start. And I think, yeah, you're going to get, you know, probably a very short price on this horse, but I do think he will come back and make it two for two. Uh, yeah, Jared's pulling up the chart now. Just a dominant effort. Um, looked like he could go longer if wanted to as well. So I think he's the one to beat. I, I think Cave Rock will be tough. Like I said, the whole field is not out yet. They have not uh, released the, the, the card. Uh, that's just kind of a safe bet. We're probably both going to be on Cave Rock in this spot. Davey, he could definitely be a top. If he wins this thing like he won that one or you know, very similar, he's definitely in the running to be a top draft pick in our upcoming um, yeah. fantasy league. Uh, you know, son of Arrogate. So I'm, I know, you know, I, every time I see a son of Arrogate, you know, I, I get excited. So the, the fact that that horse has looked as good as he did and, you know, going from a main special weight to a grade one um, should tell you a lot about what the connections think of, uh, of this horse. So, Mm -hmm. um yeah we'll see you know wait for that field to come out well of course we'll have analysis and uh and previews for that um on our youtube page as well as racingdudes.com but uh for now that seems to be the pick here we both like cave rock in the futurity for sure <clears throat> i'm sure I'm sure the magic mic crew is antsy waiting for this to end here they're coming up right after us it is state it's like it's gonna be a from now on basically you get us you get the magic mic crew halterman comes back with the dudes you bet uh sports and then uh just when you think it's all over you get the halftime show tonight uh at the nfl game with uh right. with savage and uh and slim so good luck with that but uh yeah so tons of dude action that's right dude action coming that's your right. way that's 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 what everybody shows up for here. The dude action. I get that's it. That's right. All right. That's all the time we have. Check us out at racedudes.com for our free picks and our premium selections on our products page. Click the get racing dudes premium button at menu at the at the menu at racingdudes.com to learn more. Remember, we are your destination site for all free horse racing picks to all the major horse racing tracks. We're on Twitter at racing underscore dudes, Instagram and Facebook. You can find all episodes of Blinkers off by visiting our podcast page. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcast Podcasts, all the places you listen, and of course our YouTube page. Uh, where you can watch us live as well. When we're done, we do these. You can interact with us and uh, watch all of our amazing content. If you like these videos, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you like um, and just help that YouTube page grow as we continue to pump more and more content out. And again, like I mentioned, the Magic Mike Show is coming up right after us. So just stay put. We'll, we'll be live. Kentucky, Kentucky Downs, Saturday Late Pick 4. 
The dudes who bet sports will be on with Halterman and Papa Dude. They'll be talking NFL, of course, college football. And then you've got the NFL halftime show with uh, with Samich and Slim. And, you know, if you're like us, you know, Halter and I own the site. And it's like, you just get on there to see, okay, what what's going to happen? Because we, you know, we know now we can't control Slim. We have no idea what he's going to do. So it's just we tune in just basically see, okay, what do we need to be ready for? You know, what kind of, a, you know, HR moments are we going to have to have? Um, that kind of thing. I, I, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a very interesting show. I can't wait to tune in. And yeah, I think uh, uh, Samich said Slim was uh, making some uh, slides and some graphs, and Samich said, don't do that. So I don't know what you'll actually get tonight, but uh, it, it should be interesting. Uh, Polly wants to know Bills or Rams? I took the Rams. I've got the Rams too. I got the, uh, go. I just thought, you know, and I listened to, or I watched you guys this morning on Due to Bet, and you, you kind of mentioned it as well. And it's just like, when I think the game could go either way, I mean, certainly it's, I think it's going to be a good game. I mean, the Rams are the Super Bowl champs, right? And I, Cooper Cup, Allen Robinson, you've got Stafford. I think the Bills' secondary is good, but you know, having some injuries there might might help a little bit. I just you can't. I just don't think you can stop the the Rams' offense. Um, I I think the Rams. Are, I mean, I'm sorry, the Bills are extremely overhyped and extremely overrated. But at the same time, I think they can win the Super Bowl. But for people to think they're just an absolute shoe in to win the Super Bowl is insane. And that people are acting like they're like one to five to win the Super Bowl, right? It's just like I, you're overrating them big time. Are they good? Yeah, they're good. Is Josh Allen good? Hell yes. They have a great defense. Yes, but they are not a lock to win the Super Bowl, and they are not a lock to beat the Rams tonight. And I, I'm going to take the, the the plus money with the Rams. And if I lose, am I be shocked? Absolutely not. It's going to be a, a, a tough game. But Jared said it, and like I said too, if I look at it and say, "Hmm, this is a toss up," and then I look at the line and go, "Oh, the Rams are getting points." I'm mm-hmm. taking the team that's getting the points. Yeah, and just uh, being at home, and you know, I think that the, uh, the what is it last? I know last year that we had the same. Everyone thought the Bills were the team, mm-hmm. um, maybe even the year before. But it's just like at some point uh, you got to. We're talking about the Super Bowl champion Rams, and yep. everyone wants to just go ahead and crown the Bills as being the next. But it's like they've yet to make it to the Super Bowl, you know. They, they got annihilated by the Chiefs in the AFC Championship. They couldn't even make the AFC Championship last year um, when everyone thought they would. And so it's just like at some point when you're getting – I just don't get the hype, I guess. Um, I get the hype. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a hater. But I'm just saying when you're playing against the Rams who just won the Super Bowl, come on, get the points. Take the points. Yeah. Polly says so. it too. If it's a, if it's a toss-up game, if you truly believe it's a toss-up game, you can't – you got to take the better price, Right. It's like if there's two horses that are running and one's six to five and one's seven to five, and you truly can't decide between the two from a gambling aspect, you have to take the bigger price. And so that's, that's all it really is to right. kind of put it in horse racing terms for me. I'm just, listen, toss up. I don't really know who's going to win. I think it's going to be a great game. I'll take the bigger price. And listen, if it's 28 to 10 Rams, I will be shocked, <laughs> Jesse, but I would take it because that would mean I would collect money. So I, I when I was looking earlier, you can get you can get some major uh, odds on that. By the way, with the if the Rams were to win by uh, eighteen, mm-hmm. you get that's major. Like you can get high odds. So if you want to go play some props, you can do that, Jesse. I would suggest it if you think it's going to be that. I don't think it's going to be. I think it's going to be more like a 28, 24, uh, 30, you know, thirty five, thirty two kind of game. I think any bet you make, you're going to be sweating it out. I think the over-under is right about right. I think each to- team total is right about right. I think the line's right. You know, I think it's going to be a sweat game no matter what you're gambling on tonight. Uh, that That's that's my prediction. The NFL knows how to do it. They put together a really nice opening. Um, you know, I think you have some, you know, you have some storylines already built in with the Rams being the defending, cha- defending champions and with the Bills being the team that, they, like we're mentioning, everyone thinks is like should go to the Super Bowl this year. Um, also you can look even, you know, if the chiefs didn't pull off the miracle, uh, in that, uh, divisional game against the bills, could the bills have beaten the Bengals and been in the super bowl? You know what I mean? So there's all these storylines. They've been played the Rams. So 
lots of storylines. Maybe we'll see, maybe it's a preview for the Super Bowl this year. Um, we'll find out. But it, I do think it's going to be a great game. Bet your money and just sit back and try to enjoy the game. Remember last year? Wasn't it uh, uh, the Cowboys and the Bucks? Wasn't that yeah. it? Mm-hmm. And it was just a doozy. Remember, mm-hmm. it was just back and forth. And Dak was coming off the injury, and he looked amazing. And it was just, you know, you're like, oh, man, both these teams. Well, of course, um, you know, the, the the Cowboys cowboyed it up all year. You know what they do. But, yeah, the Cowboys won everything but the game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly they uh and then you know and they continue to disappoint you know i think we all yeah. thought man they they should go far in the nfc like we're gonna see them again you know in the nfc championship like that'd be a great nfc championship re- you know, preview right here and it's like no no nope. it's the cowboys <laughs> sorry yep. um who who is well i guess we have to we have to it's a it's a it's a tradition like no other we have to give our I was going to wait till next week, but the season will be started. So we've got to give our Super Bowl picks. We do it every year. Oh, boy. You go first. I'm putting you on the spot. Uh, no, no. Um, okay. Uh, oh, this is tough this year. Hmm. I'm going to go. <laughs> it's tough this year. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to go. Okay, I got it. Okay. I'm going to do, I'm going with the rematch of a few years back. Give me Chiefs 49ers. Chiefs 49ers. I will take the 49ers of the NFC. Okay. Oh, the AFC is you, you can pick it. You can almost pick any any uh team out of that division and and be okay with it, really. That's the problem. I think it's going to come out of the AFC West. I have not decided who's the best team out of that yet. I don't think anybody knows. I mean, char- I I want to say Chargers, but I hate the Chargers, but I I, the, I could see how that's possible. For the first time ever since I've been following the NFL, I'm not sure who's the best, and it could be any of the four. You can literally make a case for any of the four being the best. I, I think it's going to come out of there. I think their 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 records going into the playoffs are going to not look great, and I think people are going to you know kind of underestimate them because I think they're going to beat up on each other. And mm-hmm. But I think that's also going to toughen them up for the playoffs. I can't go the Chargers because of their coach. I can't go the Raiders because they're the Raiders. I think it's going to be Kansas City or Denver. I really do. Because here's the deal. Denver has been decent. to Well, they've been below average, but they still have been one of the better below average teams with a guy that could not beat out Geno Smith at quarterback. They have Russell Wilson now. They have to be better. That being said, I think the Chiefs are the forgotten team. I'm going the same thing as you. I'm going to go the Chiefs and the 49ers. Wow. Because I think when it comes down to it, Mahomes is still better than than the quarterbacks in that division, even though the gap has been narrowed considerably. I think they're under the radar. I think they're going to struggle early. And I think they're going to really come on late. I'm going to go the Chiefs. Yeah, it's amazing how much (laughs) just absolute – Hey, the Chiefs have gotten, you know, they've just forgotten. Like, they can't get it done. They are the favorites in the division to win, um, but it's close between the Chargers and Broncos, and the Raiders are a much bigger prize. I'm with you. I, if I had to put it in order, I'd put it, I'd go, I think I'd go Chiefs, Broncos, Chargers, Raiders is where yeah. I, I'm at now. Yeah. Because um, I just think the Broncos are going to be a, the most, the, the, I think out of everyone in the division, they're going to be the mo- most well rounded. Got a good defense. They got a great running game. They got a quarterback that fits that that plan um they'll be tough they there's no there's no logical reason and maybe it happens dennis and maybe i'm wrong but if you watch denver throughout these last few they would play the chiefs close with no offense because they're tough like they, they, their defense is tough their running game is tough Mm-mm. if russell wilson can just be 70 percent of what he's been i think they'll be a tough beat i don't think they can win at all i think they'll be a tough team to beat 
All right. Well, I did not. I kind of thought you. I didn't think you would go Chiefs. Um, but uh, cheat. Yeah, Chiefs, 49ers, and shit. I, maybe the 49ers get the get their revenge on them. Um, but uh, I don't know. I think the 49ers are gonna be. I think they're gonna be good. I think they're gonna be really good. They, yeah, um, they, they seem like they've underperformed since the Super Bowl. They were damn close last year to getting there. Mm-hmm. And I think they're a little bit better this year. So, yep, I agree. I, and I think that, you know, it's tough to repeat. So obviously the Rams, um, you know, yeah. Packers, I don't get, I, I can't understand why the Packers are no. uh, so low of odds um, to, to win. And the Bucks, just too many question marks for me yeah. on what's happening with that out there. And, you know, the 49ers seem to be, to me, the, 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 the NFC team to, that's going to, that has the most, likely scenario to get back into the Super Bowl. So yeah. Yep. All right. I can't believe we did it, but we're both on the Chiefs 49ers. Uh <laughs> we're screwed now. Um I don't all right. That's a wrap guys. I think that Magic Bike is live right now. So just just turn us off and go watch them. Uh until next time. Uh, we got a big, you know, we got Pennsylvania Derby coming up. Uh of course a few more uh what do we got next week is the jock or the what is it the the turf race at Aqueduct. The, mm-hmm. for the three-year-old turf um so we got that to talk about next week so we'll be back with more racing of course as we get closer to the breeders cup i'm jared welch he's in halterman good luck this weekend guys